Welcome back. You may recall last summer when we sat down with Ryan Cremines with his start of treatment for cancer. He had just had surgery and since then has been through chemotherapy and radiation therapy. Well, recently we got to celebrate a great day for Ryan. The day he got to ring the bell at the University of Kentucky Markey Cancer Center and Dance Blue Clinic as he finished chemo and hopefully moves on now cancer free and ready to live the rest of his life as a growing boy. Last year, we spent time with Ryan Cremines and his family shortly after he had been diagnosed with rhabdomyosarcoma. After his diagnosis in June, Ryan underwent surgery, chemotherapy, radiation therapy, and countless days in hospitals, as well as adjusting to the new reality of a battle with cancer. Recently, Ryan reached a great milestone when he completed his treatments for cancer, and we were there when he got to ring the bell. Well, today is my last chemo. And um, I'm super duper excited. And um, uh, I'm very tired, kind of. Because. You're allowed to. <laughs> it's been a hard road for Ryan with treatments, travel, good days, and bad. He just, he's always bounced back and he's done great. He's been going to school. He's uh, just been really a normal nine year old boy outside of going to doctor's appointments and chemotherapy and now today we get discharged for our final chemo and you know we just we couldn't be happier it's we were talking last night we, we can't believe how quickly it's gone by when we received the news that you know it was gonna be a 42 week treatment it that seemed like an eternity to us and we we're like that's almost a year and there's so many unknowns it was just it was it was crazy um, but we were both talking about how quickly it went. Um, you know, he kept us uh, going and we kept him going and we've had the tremendous amount of support from friends, family, people that we didn't know prior to his diagnosis and it's made all the difference in the world. Throughout it all, Ryan has had incredible support from within his family and beyond. He even reached through the sports world locally and across the country. This support helped keep Ryan focused and motivated. My friends who play football in the NFL and my friends who play basketball, they helped me through, and especially Zach did, because he FaceTimed me the night before my, um, my surgery on my head right here, and it made me feel better about it, because at first I was super scared, but then I wasn't scared at all. Boom Williams, he plays for the Kentucky Wildcats. <laughs> Denzel Ware. C.J. Conrad, Tay, what's his last name? Weaver. Yeah, Tay, Tay Weaver. Weaver. He plays for EKU, and I got to sit on the sidelines at an EKU basketball game, and it was awesome. Um, and How's that make you feel that all these people care about you? It makes me feel awesome. In fact, two U.K. football players were there for Ryan's big day and had been with him throughout much of his treatment. Treatment. Um, I just seen Ryan his first chemo treatment. We just had a relationship since, so this is I was here for his first, so should be here for his last. He was going through his first chemo treatment, and I mean he had a smile on his face still. So that just showed me a lot about him. I mean I'd be so scared, and you know he just he took this on, and it just shows a lot about his character and you know, who he is as a person at such a young age. You know that's what I really saw in him. That's why I think we connected right away, and that's why our relationship's so strong. I always talked about how he wanted to play football and you know, I always wanted to play baseball. And so, you know, every time I came here and every time I got a chance to talk to him, you know, that's the main things he always talked about was just getting a chance to play sports. And, you know, that's the big goal that he was willing to push forward to. So, you know, by him, his last day of chemo and he get the opportunity to go out there and just really just play the game that everybody loves to watch. And, you know, he gets a chance to participate in it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would say when I went to Dance Blue, he went and danced in front of, I don't know, hundreds of people. And I was nervous for him. I mean, I, I couldn't do that. So just to see, you know, the confidence in himself, I mean, he, he killed it. So, I mean, that just, just seeing that, I mean, that's, that's just something I knew he was, I mean, he, he, kicked, I mean, he kicked its butt. I mean, it was awesome. It wasn't too long after our interview that Ryan got to experience his love of sports, leading the U.K. Wildcats onto the field for their spring game. C.J. Conrad and Denzel Ware once again at his side. That's Ryan Cremines, 12-year-old cancer survivor with the flag, and here come the Cats. 
football in April, Chris Doring. Gotta love it. The amazing aspect of the entire ordeal is that Ryan's father feels like Ryan has gained more from his diagnosis than he lost. And as much as I wish this never would have happened um, and would give anything for him to not have to deal with it, but he's really taken more from this diagnosis than it ever could have taken from him. He's come out a much more self-confident, um, just, I mean, a happy person. It's, it's been amazing to watch. You know, he used to be a little more shy and reserved, and he was at Dance Blue dancing like Michael Jackson in front of 2,000 people. So, mm -hmm. you know, he's, uh, he's really got a, a good perspective. One, one of the things that helped me do it was keeping a good attitude. And me and my dad made a promise at the beginning, if he has a bad day, I pick him up. If I have a bad day, he picks me up. And that's really helped me a lot. But at the Dance Blue Clinic at the University of Kentucky, today is all about the end of a journey, the last day of chemo for Ryan Cremines. Well, it's, it's the biggest milestone you know, we can achieve through, uh, through his treatment is reaching, reaching the end point. And uh, they have a tradition that pretty much all the hematology oncology clinics that when you reach a milestone like completion of radiation, completion of chemotherapy, then you ring a bell and he's a uh, he's threatened to turn it into the Liberty Bell. He's gonna ring it so hard. He's he's pretty excited about going down there and he's uh, I mean we've been talking about it and thinking about it now that it's finally here it's it's really it's kinda of surreal. And it's going to feel odd because we've seen people coming in and out, you know, while we've been there and ringing the bell thinking, you know, we're, are we ever going to get to that point? <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations to him. I'm proud of him. That's awesome, man. I'm proud of you. you know, high five. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Ryan still has a long road with checkups and monitoring, but the sound of that bell symbolizes once again that modern medicine, motivation, and strong support have beat back cancer. That's all the time we have for this episode of Stanton MD. I appreciate you tuning in and hope you'll join the conversation with us. Facebook at the Stanton MD page, also Twitter, follow us at Everyday Med, and check out the old segments on YouTube at Stanton MD. Until next time, I'm Dr. Ryan Stanton, and this has been Stanton MD. Yeah.